Wow. <laughs> I think it's time. I think it's time. I really do think it's time. We are live. I'm fixing my hood. Got my fresh cold beverage. Grape soda. Ah. Frosty cold beverage. How's everybody doing? Tonight we're going to talk about <laughs> which one would you rather have? Would you rather have a big block Chevy or an LS? Let's say you've got a truck or some sort of project car that you're, you know, you're going to go to the wrecking yard and get motors like we all do. You know, the the new motor, <laughs> the one the wrecking yard, it was somebody else's used motor, but to you, it's fresh and new, obviously, because those, those are the best kind. They've already been broken in. They're ready to run. You just put oil in them and, and, and away they go. So the question is, which one would you rather have? And, and and actually, this is a fairly common question because, and it's a lot closer than you think. Although we have to look both at horsepower and torque, and, and that's really kind of what gets a lot, to, a, lot, a lot of people. But we have a Gen 6 454. When I run these things on the engine dyno, we've run them fuel injected. We've run them car carbureted. Most normally, we'll get those big blocks. And take off the stock fuel injection. We'll put on a dual plane intake manifold, carburetor, and a distributor. And then run it with headers on the dyno the way that we run everything else. We have run them with the fuel injection. And with the factory fuel injection, it's not a lot different. It makes a little bit more power down low. And then a little bit less power on the top than the dual plane does. We run the stock injectors in it. We run headers on it. No, no accessories and all that stuff. And it's about um, 370. 375 horsepower. So they do very, they do pretty well. But when we run the factory fuel injection, obviously it's less than that. And that's not unusual. I mean, they're, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and look up some Dyna results here. Uh oh, dogs are on patrol. So we got about 375 horsepower and I want to make sure that I know what the torque is. I want to see if it's 500 foot pounds. Dino results. Uh oh, there, there's an animal outside. Gen 6 junkyard, Gen 6 454 stock can. Yeah, they, they actually do. Like 500, um, oh, that's for the cam. Stock cam, no, nah, not quite. Let's let's call it 480 or 490 foot-pounds. They do pretty well. The question is, they're making 375 horsepower. If we take a look at that as, as a comparison, hey, doggies, hey, hey, crazy dogs. If we take a look at that in comparison to a typical 5.3, like an LM7, now the, the L33 made a little bit more power, but you don't find those very often. Lots and lots of LM7s. There are lots and lots of iron uh, 5.3 liters, and they actually make a little bit less power, 350 to 355 or so. They obviously make quite a bit less torque to make 385 foot-pounds. So they're, they're down a good 100 foot-pounds of torque compared to a, a typical Gen 6 454. So which one would you rather have? Would you rather have the big block or would you rather have to start out with? Would you rather start out with that big block or would you rather start out with a, a, an LS? And the, there, there are a couple of other things to consider here. One is that obviously an LS, even an iron block LS, is going to be a good bit lighter than an iron block <laughs> big block. Plus the iron block big block has iron heads on it. So it's no featherweight. I would imagine that the big block has got to be a good hundred pounds heavier than the, than the LS is. Somebody let me know if you guys know what the weights are, or if you can look that up really quickly. Tell me what that weight difference is. I, it's got to be at least that much. So you do have a lot more torque. You have a little bit more horsepower. You have more weight. It's bigger packaging and stuff. And so when you're putting it in your vehicle, if it's just a drag race vehicle, a lot of times, that weight, you, you know, you want less weight because it's horsepower to weight. But a lot of guys when drag racing are less concerned about that because they're not trying to go around corners. They're not trying to do braking, you know, the stuff that you would do if you're road racing, where it becomes a little bit, or I should say, even more of an issue having a lot of weight. So that's where they start out with. But, and, and we have the weight difference. We have the power difference. We have the torque difference. But here's the thing to think about. 
when we start looking at doing a modification on them, particularly the, the most common thing that you do on either one of those, now you've already put a dual plane or something on the, on the big block, but the most common thing that you do is put a cam and springs in it. So if we take a cam and springs and put it on our big block, typically what happens on my testing when we do it, we've done a variety of different camshafts on those, but th they look like they jump up about 50 horsepower. So it goes from 375 or so up to 4, 425. Torque's up also over 500 foot-pounds, um, even, even though we've put a, a bigger camshaft in. Remember, we know that <laughs> just because it's a smaller, milder cam doesn't mean it makes more torque. In fact, it usually makes less torque, but sometimes it makes a little bit more torque at the very bottom of the RPM range, and, th and that's the case. If we put a 224 or a 230 camshaft in it, it makes a lot more power, um, and, but it will trade very low-speed torque, but it but it still makes more peak torque with the bigger camshaft. And that's fairly typical of these things. It, you just make it at a little higher RPM. So now we've got a big block with a cam and springs in it. We've got a big block that makes 425 horsepower and over 500 foot pounds, 510 or 515 on a really good one. On a, if we take and, and put a camshaft in a 5.3, it's very easy to get 425 horsepower. In fact, it's easy to get more than that. You you know, you could do a camshaft, even if we, like when we put the Truck Norris cam, the Brian Truly Racing Truck Norris cam in the L33, it was, it was like 425 horsepower. If we put that in LM7, it's going to be slightly less, but we could also put like the hot rod cam or any other cam. We could put a, one of the, one of the, <laughs> If we want to go crazy, you put one on the comp 459 or 469, uh, a stage four um, uh, LS3 cam like we did in the L33 for mine truly, a hot rod cam a truck or a um, red hot cam. There's lots of stuff to choose from where we could make a lot of power. You got to do springs too, but you got to do springs on the big block as well. So you could, you if you do a cam, you could make more power on the 5.3 than you can really with the big block. And the reason for that is not because one is inherently better than the other. The reason for that is because there's more piston to valve clearance to play with. In, in, the, in the LS motor, we, we can put camshafts in it that are, you know, like mid 230s, let's say, and e even mid to high 230s if, we, if we're juggling the LSA around, where we can make a lot of peak power in a 5.3. It's going to, because it's smaller, it wants to rev, the horsepower number is going to be higher. So we can get pretty good power, but if we put a 230-ish cam between 230 and 235, let's say, which is the available piston to valve clearance on a big block, we just don't make and we don't make the same horsepower gain because we're still talking about a thing making peak power, you know, like at 5,500 RPM. It's not, you know, it's. <laughs> let's see when we did our cams. So we put our. Yeah, yeah. For this one, we did a big block. We put a dual plane and air gap intake, 650 Holly, a 282 comp cam, which was 510, 520, 230, 236, and a 110, and it made peak power at 5200. So that's the thing. Is it? Is it? You know, it's it's making decent power. It made over 500 foot pounds, 506 or seven foot pounds on on that particular one. But it's just not making power at a high enough engine speed where it's <laughs> it doesn't shift it enough to make lots of lots of horsepower. It's still making really good torque because it's still a fairly mild cam for a 454 inch motor rather than a 325 inch motor. So with a cam only, we can get lots more horsepower with a 5.3. We're never going to make the torque, but we're going to make over 400 foot pounds. If we put a camshaft in a 5.3, it's probably going to be over 400 foot pounds we've made you know with camshafts we've made uh between 400 and 415 let's say pretty consistently with those but again it's still a big difference it, it's still a hundred foot pounds gain uh, or advantage with the big block compared to the smaller 5.3 liter you have more horsepower could you then uh, take gearing in fact that's going to be our pull i'll put our pull up
Would you pick a Junkyard Gen 6 454 over a 5.3 liter LS for your project? So the, the question then becomes, if, if, if we have a 454 that makes 425 horsepower and we have a 5.3 LS that makes, let's, let's say it makes 440 or 450, which is pretty doable with a camshaft. Which one of those would you pick? Knowing that the big block is going to be up 100 foot-pounds of torque over the smaller motor and that the big block is going to be up at least 100 pounds <laughs> in terms of, you know, engine weight and therefore curb weight, we're going to have to change that. And then we would obviously in those two combinations more than likely run different gearing for each one of those. So if you had a Turbo 350, Turbo 400, or an overdrive, hopefully not a 460, but something like that. And then we could put, you know, you could gear it for the 454 or gear it for the 5.3. Maybe try the same gear for both of them and kind of see what happens. Let's put 410s in. Let's go nuts. Let's see what it does with maybe <laughs> the 454 maybe winding pretty high, trying to go through third gear if it's only a three-speed transmission. You know, by the time we're hitting the, um, by the time we're hitting, going across the line. but you, you have to gear that with the, you know, you do the calculation of the gearing tire size and find out where we need to be in terms of RPM on a motor that makes peak power at less than 5,500 RPM, you're going to have to have some gear in it. You know, if the thing only runs 90 miles an hour, it's not a big deal. It runs 110 miles an hour. That's going to be a different thing. And then uh, on one of these things with the Gen 6 454, I added like a little 100 or 125 horse, uh, you know, plate nitro setup. And that was really good <laughs> that we could make over 500 horsepower or, or 500 horsepower and then more than 600 foot pounds. Then all of a sudden it becomes a fairly serious motor, but doing a, doing a hundred shots to the five, three also helps out quite a bit as you would imagine, because running nitrous on it. And that's obviously a question that I get that's very common. Richard, what cams you have should I run with nitrous? You should run whatever cam that you're going to run NA because then the nitrous is just going to add to that. Did on the big block, <laughs> did on the small block, did on all of them because that's what they do. So the question, I, I'm curious to see what people think. Um, do we got big block, mostly big block guys here and or mostly LS guys? There's a, when I did the videos on, or when I've done several videos on those, in the comparisons, we get guys from both camps. Hey, big, you know, got to stay with the big block torque. There's, you know, LSs don't have that. They'll never have that. And then the LS are like really a junkyard 5.3 makes as much as a big block does. So you get those guys too that come out and say, yeah, well, I'm not jumping Coke cans and I'm not putting hundred dollar bills on the windshield or whatever. You know, that's a, that's a boomer motor, you know, all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's interesting to hear all of that stuff go back and forth. Um, but it's, it's an important question because if you're going to go to the wrecking yard, first of all, it would, for me, <laughs> I'd rather do a video on somebody picking either one of those and somebody picking a, a weird Cleveland or an inline six cylinder or four cylinder or a rotary or just something unique. That would be cool too. I would be, I would be on board with that, but it's, it's obviously, um, you know, it makes good financial sense to pick something that not only is inexpensive to buy initially, but also you got to look at down the road. Are there things available for that? You know, how many, how many aftermarket heads are there for a 300 inline six cylinder Ford motor? <laughs> There's one or two. Um, maybe the Australian guys have, have a head for that um, or, or build your own, like the bosses and LS LS stuff that we've seen out there. But that's, that's a consideration in those two examples, a big block Chevy and an LS, there's lots of stuff available for both of those. There's an endless number of cylinder heads for both of those. There's endless intake manifolds, endless camshafts, you know, so you have a really good market for both of those. So though in those two examples, I'd say that that's fairly even. The one thing I have to say though, is if you go to price big block Chevy, aluminum heads, which is definitely what you'd want, um, they're going to be pretty pricey. <laughs> they're not going to be cheap. LS heads, especially on a 5.3, you can have guys port the stock heads and do pretty well. Um, I haven't seen, and maybe there is data out there. You guys let me know if you see that. I have not seen uh, 
like dramatic results from guys porting the the Gen Six heads. I haven't seen anything where a guy has done you know a stock head and then ported it and goes, "Hey, look, we got three hundred and whatever CFM out of this stock Gen Six head after porting it." Because really, honestly, who wants to port iron heads anyways? But if they did that, is that readily available? And can guys do it? And you know, will it support the power level? Because we know ported heads will help. Um, you know, and ultimately it comes down to what are you trying to achieve and then how do you want to achieve it? Because if you want to say, I have a big block Chevelle, I have a big block S10, whatever, I have a big block, whatever kind of vehicle you have, that's cool too. I, I understand that. Um, or, or do you just care about, hey, look, I have a 12 second, whatever it is. I have an 11 second, whatever it is, or 10 or whatever thing you're trying to get to. And do, do, is it important to you to throw the like icing on the cake and say, I have a 10 second, whatever that costs me $1,100, <laughs> you know, some people like that too. Oh yeah. I did this for the, you know, the cost of biggie fries and, and to a lot of people that's important. I mean, if you can get it done and get it as cheaply as possible, that's really important to a lot of guys. Some guys want to do it a particular way. I don't want to do a big block. I don't want to do an LS. I want to do a Cleveland or I want to do an AMC or I want to do whatever other weird thing would be, would be good. Um, because then they could say, I did all this and I did it with a Buick or an Oldsmobile or a Pontiac or whatever other guys kind of motor just, and you're, you know, you're talking to the right guy here because I, I like all that stuff. So right now we are split like 51, 49. <laughs> So that's pretty even between. We got lots of big block Chevy guys. You got lots of LS guys. Would you pick a junkyard Gen 6 454 over a 5.3 LS for your project motor? 51's got the nose going on. We've got 89 people here, 63 votes. You guys better get in there and vote if you care at all. Otherwise, we'll lose the shop. <laughs> uh, it's a big block party. Who could ask for more? Zax, what's going on? You got your camp shaft? I'm glad. I have, uh, I brought home lots of cams with me. <laughs> I got a bunch. If I could sell all these cams that I brought home with me instead of them just sitting around collecting dust, um, I could get enough to probably get biggie fries. It'd be nice. Good evening, Heat Merchant. I will take the 454. Eric, Zax, BNR, Turbo Centra. The joy of cubic inches is equal to the joy of boost. So displacement and boost are, the, are both good things, right? Yesterday, I found a Gen 3 5.3 in a garage on our job site. I do demolition, so anything we find, we're allowed to keep. So I got it for free. Very cool. I have a friend of mine that does uh, construction stuff, and they have found all kinds of things in... Um, apartment complexes and, and industrial areas and stuff that they've, that they've demoed. It's amazing what people leave behind. Funny bug, John wrote no replacement for displacement. If I was 60 years younger, <laughs> I'd be all over the newer, newer style motors. Changing the transmission lines out so I can start my unhybrid. Very cool. Both are good options. That's right, Jesse. There's really no, there's no bad choice. So I don't know what engine is in my vehicle. I have an 05 Chevy Tahoe, which is a 5.3 from what I understand. Okay. If you, um, Philly, if you take a look at your VIN number on your Tahoe, it will tell you not only what the displacement is, but which one it is. Kind of want to know what I should do if I want to make a little make it a little more punchy. Um, camshaft is normally the first thing. If you don't want to dig into the motor, you can do. I have videos up on long tube headers, rockers, air intake thing. Well, not so much air intake stuff because I don't really do that on the engine dyno. But a tune helps all that stuff. Gen six four fifty four big block is rated the same horsepower torque as the famous SD455 Trans Am package with the milder 744 cam detuned for EPA in 1973. So is that the automatic cam or something that do you guys call it that? Am I getting that right? Depends on the weight of the vehicle. If it's stock, I'd pick an LS. If I'm building it, the bigger the better. The pocketbook just doesn't like it. Yeah, it is a lot more expensive to build a, a 454. 
140 pounds heavier. Yeah, I knew it was at least 100. Throw as much nitrous as you can at it. And the nitrous, for me, the way that I do nitrous is that I think nitrous is a function of whatever the NA power is. Big Chevy has a strong crankshaft and really have to do something reckless uh, or foolish to hurt it. Yep. Although the LS crankshaft, since we've thrown 1500 at it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty strong too. I would go LS because the aluminum heads that flow on a cam takes to the next level. Big blocks, you have to buy heads and intake just to get started. I, we put cams in them with the stock heads. I'd be wondering what cleaning up the stock heads would do on a Gen 6 454. 4 by cam, 4 by 4 cam versus a turbo cam, those are actually the same cam. I don't think a big block would fit in my S10. That's a, probably pretty snug, right, without sacrificing some stuff. Now we're talking Dodge. I go big block every time because it's Dodge. The when I left from West Tech, the uh, Steve and and Troy were running a um, some sort of big block Dodge on the engine dyno. My big block came out of a '69 Copo Camaro. That's a really good big block. That's an L72, <laughs> unless it's a ZL1. That would be pretty rare. Find a 454 Gen 5 or Gen 6, it would be bolted to an 4L80E if the vehicle is an automatic. And almost, well, all of the ones that I've ever found um, are all automatics, right? They're all in big trucks. Gen 6, 454 big block trucks all had 373s, 410s, 456s, 488s, and 513s. They rent from the factory, they went all the way up to 513 gears. LS7, 454, 53, especially an aluminum one, in that order, please. So do you want the LS7 7 liter LS or do you want the LS7 um, 454, like crate motor? Is a 400 small buck Chevy just as comparable to an LS as far as horsepower and torque numbers? No. They never, Antonio, they never made a performance version of the 400 small block, unfortunately. I'm putting one of those together as though they would have made it back in the day. But all the 400s were um, pedestrian motors used in trucks. And I think they use them in trucks. I know they use them in full-size vehicles. And then most of them were even two-barrel manifolds, if I remember right. I drove 12 hour, a 12 hour trip for 454 Gen 6, 45,000 miles, 800 lucked out. That's good. The LS is lighter, especially an aluminum one. Yep, those are harder to find. I can't believe I found four six liter LSs in the wrecking yard all at one time. All right, the room and a budget, a big block, just because it's a big block. Uh, Travis, you're, you're passing, you're, you're saying nope. The availability of the 5.3 itself pays for itself. I can tell you that I found uh, a lot more LSs. There, there, were, there had to be a dozen 4.8s and 5.3s there. <laughs> 454 Tunnel Ram for a Vega. That's a good combination. Great to do a test on a 4.8 with a 4150 throttle body. I, I have a lot. It's all, we know what that does. The 4150 throttle body does nothing. Um, the intake manifold determines what kind of power that a 4.8 makes. Richard, did you ever test the Gen 6 heads with the bigger 219 valve? I don't think we ever upgraded valves on those heads. I'd choose a Gen 7 8.1 liter. Those do make good power. Although I've never seen one in a wrecking yard that I can remember. At the No Name Nationals 2023, my 1997 Chevy 2500 Gen 6, Raced it a lot. Raced it at the 19 at a 1971 Le Mans. Oh, raced it in a 1971 Le Mans with 700 horsepower turbo 5.3. Almost won. That's cool. Got to respect the big block. Is the Vortec 454 heads not? Are they not better than the older heads? They are better than the peanut port heads. Um, I would like to see a test of those heads versus like an 049 head or the the um oval port heads from the past i suspect because they have like a 
20 cc difference in chamber size between the older like 049 head and a new gen 6 head and they have standard size um oval ports my guess is they're going to make more power because they're definitely going to have higher compression boost and a big block for the win i have run boost on big blocks and like every motor they do like it last week i ran across a guy doing an ls swap in a 99 one ton he gave me the gen 6 big block score of the year that's awesome I've often wondered if, if a 5.3 and a 454 have similar peak horsepower, which has an advantage on something short like an eighth mile or a light to light. It, it, that would be interesting. I, I would love to see somebody do that test. That, that seems like a good Jeff Smith <laughs> test for me. Drop both of those in a Chevelle and see what happens. My guess is that on a smaller motor, you're going to want more gear in it. Saw a guy the other day putting an 8.1 direct injection. Yeah, that's pretty famous on YouTube right now. Want to achieve horsepower with tons of torque? Okay. Man, I'm still going back. And I'm a long way out. Okay, here we go. You can probably guess I'm picking a big block over an LS. Yep, Andy, I get that. I want to build a 4.7 liter. Power tech, the bottom main girl is also the main caps. It's kind of built like a K-series in that regard. Looks stout. The block is rarely the issue with horsepower, but um, usually it's, if, especially factory stuff, usually it's a rod or a piston. Eric, do you want an AMC 401? Is there an aftermarket for a 47? I don't, I haven't heard of that. I think a turbo LS, any, dis any displacement stuff to beat. Just a big block lover. That's good. Gen 6 454 will accept 219 intake valves. Yep. And they'll go to 320 CFM. They make a 46 Ford intake conversion for the 47, for the 47 Dodge. I'll take the 53. I know the recipe for the 53. Cams, cams, cams. I got lots of cams. It's going to be a lot more aftermarket parts available on Marketplace for cheap soon. More than ever has been for big luck. Why, why is that? Why is that the case? Uh, flummoxed. Else engines are ugly looking. I'm working on porting some peanut ports and the Vortec heads. I'm planning on doing some dyno tests to compare what gains are over stock heads. I have the peanut ports up to 279 CFM. That's good. What about a new GM 6.6? Yeah, they make they can make good power. They got forge stuff, so you can run lots of you can put a lot of boost to them. Muscle car aeroponic V8 heads are 211 and 177. Ram Air 5s are 219 and 177. I got to see some Ram Air 5 heads, aluminum Ram Air 5 heads, um, when I was at West Tech because Evan Evan Perkins has his motor there. And he has the um, Ram Air 5 heads from the guy that when I went back, he's back in Ohio from the guy that I went and visited when I was back with the guys from the car farm and they're pretty cool. <laughs> He's definitely, definitely doing stuff the hard way, but it is awesome. I saw the 8.1 videos, uh, gen five peanut port heads, but like working on heads for sleepers. The SD 455 has no big block equal. Mm, I'd say an LS six is <laughs> probably has that handled. I want to see what the power gains are in peanut port heads and vortex with something simple like just putting big valves on. I don't know that is do you think that the valve size is what's holding them back? We built a few, few junkyard LS motors. I love big block motors. Junkyards were need to rebuild. I I haven't found that to be the case. Although you can still do a lot with LSs, I'd take the 454 all day long. 744 was the hot 1969 Rammer 3 Muncie 4 speed. 
I have a Muncie four speed if somebody's looking for one that the young lady is selling for a Pontiac. So if anybody's interested in that Muncie four speed, it's not a rock crusher, but it was going to be going in a GTO. I have an SD 455 and that was hand built dry sump provisioned four bolt main beast. Very cool. We're putting a turbo L96 in the 70 F100 using adapters to use Ford Y block valve. <laughs> the valve cover touch I like <laughs> builds. That's nice points for that. I'm just trying to build the Triton V10 and how much boost all of it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to take all of it, but it'll take some. SD455 even has an LS2 designation cast into the factory intake manifold. Was that the designation for that motor? Oh, Turbo Center, you overheated your 350. I don't think I heard it, but I did lose all the water. That's not good. The radiator cap failed. New thermostat was bad, and the water pump was bad. <laughs> so you got that's like all of the bad stuff. Had an 88 Chevy one ton dually, 454, turbo 400 needs a home. An 88. A healthy stock displacement 440 would be fun. How reliable are the seven liter motors? Did anybody feel the earthquake we just had in Northern California? I didn't feel it. We did get a bunch of hail today. I got to stand in my garage and watch that. Station wagons had small block 400. That's right. GM 14 bolt, 10.5 differential with 513 gears. That's a lot. It was up by the uh, Orville Dam. Okay. We used to go up there a lot. We used to go camping up there a lot. I like it up there. 32 thumbs up. That way to go, Scott. Get those thumbs up. We got 98 people here and 43 thumbs up. Well, why are we always like at 50%? I'm porting and polishing my Gen 6 heads and running adjustable valve train, but not changing the valves. Okay. That'll be cool. Okay, there we go. All I'm saying is the SD455 is one of the most misunderstood and underrated en engine Detroit ever put out. <laughs> That's a pretty tall order. I, I like an SD455. I like those Trans Ams. I think that they're cool. But I still think that they do what they do. Richard, do you have any of the Truck Norris LS cams left? I do. Do they have all of the BTR script on the end of the cam so they come with the original cam card? If yes, no, they don't. AI is reading out mines. I'm fighting between LS3 Turbo or Gen 6 425 Turbo for my 55 Bel Air. Unfortunately, the 460 gets overlooked. The bottom end is much more suited for strength and performance. The 460 is nice. I like the big block 460s, and Mark Sanchez likes the 429 better, but 429 is better. I like the 460s because they're bigger, and you can make them into like 557s, which is awesome. For a month, this has been on my mind. Ellis or Big Black Chevy Turbo from my 55 Bel Air. <laughs> See, that's I was I was reading your mind. 454, it could be 525 inches. That's really, really rare for that to happen. Um, 496 is normally the displacement for stock blocks. But will a torque on 5.3 be what the 455 has? It's not going to be down low. It's not even going to be close. I mean, it has, you know, an extra 100 cubic inches or more than that. This video has some good timing. I'm checking out your cam test on the 5.3 today to see what a 5.3 does with the cam. There's lots of 5.3s, <laughs> lots of 5.3 cam tests I have up. This Gordon LC9 with a blown intake lifter and don't know what cam to swap in, in on the run stand. I've got some cams, Paul, if, you're, if you need some. It's hard to beat a Ford 2.25 valve available in the factory head. The choice has a lot to do with the vehicle you're putting it in. Yeah, if you have a really lightweight vehicle, like, for instance, an Opel GT, which would be awesome. 
They upgrade the oiling system on a Gen 6 454. Google it. True priority oiling like a big dart M. We don't ever do that. I mean, I'm, you can, I'm sure, but I, never in any of the testing we've run on the dyno have we done that. I like the look of race LS motors and no prep cars. The Chopper Cobra made 245 horsepower in a different video. The 5.3 made 220-ish with a 212 cam. Is the Chopper Cobra cam that much better? Was there a difference in the motors? I'm not aware of. Are you, are, Andy, are you again comparing two different motors and two different dyno tests on two different days? on two different camshafts, because that's that's not really the way to go about it. A heavier vehicle will appreciate the torque of the big wheel. And I ran the Chapacabra against the <laughs> against the Cam Motion Cam and against the um, Truck Norris Cam and then against the, who else sent one? The Summit Cam. So all you can get an idea what they all make. A heavier vehicle will appreciate the torque of the big block. Slap a twin turbo system on it. Yep. LS Ford engineering copy. So there's always going to be somebody who says, oh, this, these guys copied this to make their engine. <laughs> uh, doesn't the Gen 6 big block come with peanut port heads? No, the Gen 6 does not come with peanut port heads. The Gen 5 does. The Gen 6 actually comes with standard ports and 102cc chambers and rectang or a... Uh, Hydraulic roller cam. So they're actually pretty good. And it's a four bolt main block. Uh, BNR, send me a, an email. And um, I'm just trying to sell it for the lady that was getting rid of all her stuff. Unfortunately, her husband passed away. And so I got a bunch of Pontiac stuff that I need to get rid of for her. I'm just trying to get her some money. We need more folks willing to combine manufacturers, get the best of both worlds. I think the valve size is part of what's holding back. The Vortec peanut parts? I don't know. It might be the ports. Well, there you got to reach a point where the you got to figure out if the valve is the choke point, and then if that is the case, which I don't know, but the port eventually has to become the choke point at some point. The Triton V10, I believe, the weak point is the camshafts. Are are they just mild, or they're not from a strength point, right? We can live in harmony. That's right. Bad part is I've always been a Ford guy, but it costs uh, so much more to build a Ford than an LS. LSs are pretty cheap. Is there a chance of doing a comparison between a standard and a modified by taking an LS57 and turning down the crankshaft counterweights and knife edging them as well as grinding the rod beams? I, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get rid of windage or something? I have to dig up my flow tests with untouched peanut ports. I think there were small, small gains. Removing material off pistons and then doing a demo run after a balance. I bought an 8.1 today. Fan to flex plate, 90,000 miles for 850. Yeah, that's a good deal. What, what's my choice of what, a, an LS or a big block? My choice is yes. I like them. I can't remember the last time I saw a big block for less than two grand. That seems like a lot. I just want to see Chevy make a V10 Ford. Ford did it, and so did Dodge. Why didn't Chevy jump on it? They already had a big block, and they made their 8.1 V8 uh, to compete with that. I have two, two lifters that might not be operating properly. All the push rods have turned fast while running, but two are turning slowly. They should have put a Gen 6 454 in a 96C4 Corvette. <laughs> that would have been cool. They did They did do a couple of those. The, the Big Doggy, I think, was the name of it. But they put a... Um, they put some kind of uh, tunnel rammy tune port intake manifold on. I think so it would fit under the hood. Sean, I don't have L86 cams, but I do have L83 cams. Is the Engine Masters ever coming back on? I don't think so. Playing wall ball with the pups. <laughs> That's good. 
Do you have any BTR Trek Norris cams left? Do they have the BTR logo script on the M? No, they don't. But I do have um, cams that do what that cam does. Seems like we should be comparing 8.1 to 5.3 and Vortec 54 to Vortec 350. Turning wrenches while listening. That's good. Uh, Dan, I do have a I do have a Muncie for sale. It's the transmission that they were putting. In fact, it has the pedal assemblies and everything. It's it's a full swap because they had an automatic car. It was a 69 GTO, if I remember right. It was an automatic, and he was swapping over to a four-speed. So it has the transmission um, and also the pedals and stuff, I think. I need to change my vote to Gen 6 454. If you do a stock rebuild, the cleanup of block deck surface, but if heads rebuilt much larger in intake and exhaust valves, but heads resurface 10 to 15, new roller cam. You you would need a shorter push rod, if anything, if you mill the heads. L 3 cams wouldn't work for an LT1, would they? They would work for a Gen 5 LT1. The thing is, I don't know how much of a gain there'll be over an LT1 head or over an LT1 cam. An LT1 cam is better than the L83 cam already. I'd have to look and see which ones they are. I'm going to go through all the cams. I'm going to separate them into engine families. And then I'm going to probably this weekend, we'll talk about that. Engine choice would depend on the application. Do you know if the Muncie is wide or close ratio? I don't know. I can send you the, um, will you be able to tell from the, um, casting numbers on it. Are there any big block Chevy hydraulic roller cams available? Nope. No big block Chevy hydraulic roller stuff. I want to see a comparison of a standard engine and one that's been stripped of reciprocating weight. So what is it you want to take off of it? Because I've already done accessory tests, if that's what you're talking about. Gen 6 was the closest option to an 8.1. It was a 7.4, and so, but a Gen 6 454 does not make the power that a 8.1 does. So, that's true, BNR. You think that um, the 454 Gen 6 makes better torque than a low compression like SD 455? So blame for strictly drag race 454 for a street rod and LS. Put in first gear and spin the input shaft while counting the output. Close ratio is 220. Wide ratio is 252. Okay. So we got uh, 220 versus 252. When I was into lightweight vehicles, LS was always my choice after I converted from old school small blocks. Eric's out. I'll see you later. And on that note, so ultimately, <laughs> and this is where people like to talk about stuff, is we're talking about big blocks versus LSs. The guys want to talk about like the absolute things. So if we talk about absolutes, if you're looking at like pro mod stuff, let's say, a bigger motor makes more power. So if you got a big block, and two turbos on it and big aluminum heads and giant camshafts and all that stuff. The big block is going to make more power than an LS does. But does that mean that that's what most people are doing? No, that means what that's, that's what that group of pro mod guys are doing. Does it stop you from making a lot of power with an LS, a lighter, obviously LS? No, it doesn't. None of that's like, none of that's a real thing. <laughs> Now I build trucks, so 8.1s and 8.8s. Yeah, those are good. The PSI motors. SD-454 ran 91 RM2 gasoline. Yeah, but wasn't an SD-455, wasn't that like, wasn't that compression in the 8s? Was it 8 or 9 to 1 or something? CHE trunnions versus the Melling replacement rockers with pins and clips. I don't know. I've never tested any trunnions, and I've never done any long-term stuff on it. All of the stuff that I've ever run on any of the motors we run on the dyno ha has all been like just factory rockers with factory trunnions. So I've never done any of the upgrades. So I can't really, it'd be hard for me to speculate on that. In 
And Haggerty Magazine this month is a 97 Geo Metro powered by a 900cc Arctic Cat engine running Bonneville with a best of 130, 135 miles an hour. That's cool. That's fast. The guys that um, the, the Hudson boys have run uh, one liter bike engines in their stuff. And that's a lot of power. <laughs> New lifters, magnum roller, tall, 6.8, stock push rod, 6.8. Now intake size was way too loose. Um, you just have to, I, I don't know about the Dodge stuff. You just have to get the push rod length right. Because I think a Dodge is a shaft and it's bolt down. So the, the push rod length becomes critical. There's no adjustment on the rocker, I don't think. I thought the V10 Ford cam had a pin design that would cause them to break from stress due to the balance shaft and RPM. I'm not sure if this is true. I, I doubt, I highly doubt that the camshaft would be the thing that would break under power. It would, it would very much surprise me if that's the case. Uh, Gearhead, I'll put my email address down here. I have some, I have a bunch of used cams. I don't have any used uh, BTR truck Norris cams. I have new versions, low buck trucks <laughs> that are that cam. They're just a lot less expensive. And so that's available if you want that. If you want a designer name on your camshaft, then you need to spend three or $400 on the camshaft. I would think of it from a different perspective. When I make a few new windows in the block, the 5.3 is much cheaper. <laughs> is a much cheaper problem to solve. You need an 8.1, an 8.8. .8. Yeah, one of the PSI motors. I have a guy that will let me run one of those. It's pretty local here. Our 8.1 is actually real world faster, just slow torque monsters. Well, take a look at the videos that I did on the 8.1. 73 SD 455 was low compression. That's what I thought, Dan. I thought that they were, I thought that they were in the eights too or something. Super duty 8.5 to one. Or is that right? Is the SD-455 a good engine? I'm sorry, Microsoft Bing. I don't really trust what you're saying. Four hundred versus four fifty-five cam comparison numbers. Seventy-three to seventy-four. Pontiac, Firebird Formula, and Trans Am SD455. I really like the way those cars look. I like those. Four fifty five HO. And I like the Disco Dash too. Although compression was an emissions compliant 8.4 to 1, Pontiac engineers were able to make a lot of gains with extremely flow friendly heads, 16 casting numbers, the round port heads, center 55 used D port heads in 73 and 74, 211, 177. Ooh, in canal. Nice. A special cast iron intake manifold that wears LS2 or LS2X markings. Two hundred and ninety net horsepower, three hundred ninety foot pounds of torque. Very cool. What year was Gen Six Four Fifty Four? Ninety six to two thousand. 8.1 said torque management, the PCM would control the throttle. That's the thing, is they were trying to limit the amount of power that you could apply to the transmission to try to save the transmissions. Even though the transmissions, I think the Allisons are pretty stout. Are there any brands to stay away from for lifters? I don't think I would get eBay lifters. 
Richard, what's a good setup for Gen 2 LT1? Is that what that is? Um, the Talk to the guys at TPIS, but they have some good cams for them. Uh, you can port the stock heads, put aftermarket heads on it. The intake manifolds are pretty good. They're, they'll run a lot of RPM. I have an 8.1 in my motorhome. That's what my uh, mother and father-in-law, Lisa's parents, have a motorhome that have that motor in it and, it, and it works good. Back to SD 455s. I'm, I'm all in on that. Factory stuff was low compression, but a crane rammer, four cam, crane gold rock, rockers, and dome TRW pistons. Yeah, 11 to 1. Yeah, that's an aftermarket. I am shipping cams. In fact, I went to UPS today. Just doing the live stream, so maybe you already talked about this, but your poll question totally depends on what the budget is. <laughs> yeah. Chevy guys, 96 to 99, L29s, L21s, forged pistons made until 2001 in the truck. If they went to 2001, I thought it was 2000, but that's good. The V10 Triton can destroy the cam caps if the oil is dirty or low oil pressure. Drove a 73 SD 455 four speed super crazy torque. Yep. We had a guy in my name when I had my, I had a 70 and a half split bumper Camaro 350 you know, turbo 350 trans and a 308 gear. So it's not, it was my first car. So it's not super stellar in terms of performance. It had run 90 or 91 miles an hour after I put a four barrel on it. Cause it had a base two barrel motor. Um, but I remember we had a guy down the street that had an SD 455 and he was like all snooty. <laughs> Thought he was the cat's meow. And he was, cause he had a super duty trans M and I had a base engine split bumper Camaro. At what power level for a 383 would you start considering forged rods and pistons, 6,500 RPM? Uh, is the 383 a small block Chevy? If it's a small block Chevy you're and you're going to put a, a 383 stroker together, it's probably going to have forged rods in it anyways. Maybe 15 SD 45 RAM or four cams were equipped as such. It's okay if it has ads. That, that's YouTube making money and, and me making money of like, when I say money, it's me making change. My super stock Pontiac friend got his SC455 Trans Am from the factory with slicks on it. went 12s. Probably had some other stuff done too, but looked completely stock. Dan, it's amazing how fast those fast cars are running, the, the stock Aperion cars. Didn't Buick have a 510 foot-pound version? I know that the, the Buick had a, um, a 500 foot-pound the, their um, stage one uh, GS, uh, their stage one GS or GSX, right? It was the car that was in. Uh, BNR, the L21 did have coil on plug. It was kind of the next step up and transition to the 8.1 stuff. We're looking at some at 60 to $400 difference. Dangers were to design a 7.4 liter today. Do you think they would use a bigger cam than a 193 200? <laughs> yeah, but they were limited in what they were could do for and and if they were trying to make lots of low speed torque, obviously that thing worked pretty well. Richard eBay valve train big bang 5.3 everything but cam from eBay with a GT45 for the Chevy. A GT45 is not going to hurt a 5.3. It's just not enough turbo. You can buy a 24X wheel for the 8.8 .8 or take one off of an 8.1. Yeah, because you can run the, we run the 8.1s with the LS um, Holly HP stuff. Have you, do you have any experience with Aces jackpot LS plug and play controller? I have not run one of those. Just happy to hear SDs in the chat. I like those. I think that they're cool. I, and I like the, I like the 69 Z or the 69 Trans Am too, and the 70 Trans Am. Uh, Kerwin, um, a street street performance and 7,000 RPM in an 8.8 .8 don't go together. A 7,000 RPM 8.8 .8 liter is a really really big cam, and with stock heads, it's 
and a stock intake, it's not going to see 7,000 RPM. I mean, it'll, it might see it, but it's not going to make power anywhere near there. It's going to be, it's going to be done 1500 RPM before that. 1970 big 45 and Electra's were 510 foot pounds. SC 455 is actually 390 to 410 horsepower. Pass a chassis down test by SC 455 owners. Be nice to see a true stock SC 455. It, it would be interesting to see that. I mean, they're, they're not rated at anywhere near that. I'm curious that they would, that they would make a hundred more than they're rated at. Imagine the difference a big block Chevy would have if they designed it with LS features like compression and good head flow. Doesn't the 8.1 kind of have that? Why aren't there billet cranks, rods, and pistons? There are. It just costs money. You need to test a T6 to blow up an LS? It had to be a big T6. And I, I have T6s and I've run them on LSs already. We ran that S475 that's a T6, but that's just not enough turbo for, you know, that's like a thousand horsepower turbo. And that's not really enough to blow up an LS. How's our poll doing? 54%. Would you pick a junkyard Gen 6 454 over a 5.3 liter LS for your project motor? The yeses have rallied. <laughs> the big block guys have rallied. Lapping valves and junkyard LSs, or is that doing more harm than good? I don't think it does more harm than good. Um, I, I've done it on a lot of the Super Richie razor blade rebuilds, and that's one of the things that we do. I put it in a drill, put lapping compound on it, and then use the drill. And, you know, I, I even just chuck the valve in the drill. You can put a, a rubber sleeve over it, like a piece of... Um, rubber tubing over it and then grab it with a drill. And then I just spin it and, you know, put load on it and let the, let the polishing or rubbing compound do its job. And then it'll lap the valve back in, but it doesn't get away from, I mean, it doesn't take away the pits that are in it, particularly the exhaust valve is really bad. The intake valve is not usually too bad, but on the exhaust valve, you're going to have pits in it that you need to take away with actual, an actual valve job. But the lapping is better than it not sealing. Um, and it seems to work pretty well. The first engine was a 1974-55 Adam Electra into a 73 El Camino. And you were 13. <laughs> no, nice. The 8.8540 PSI has torque like a 6.7 Cummins. Is the 8.8 .8 intake manifold better than the or different than the 8.1? What about Texas Speed 427? Is that a big block? Uh, a Texas Speed 427 LS is just still just an LS. It's not, it's not a big block. But the Pontiac guys get mad when I call the 455 a big block. Pontiac never made a big block. Okay. Okay. Okay, they didn't. But I will forever call that a big block. Because to me, a 454 or 455, those are all big blocks. Did the Big Bang 5.3 have Gen 4 rods? No, it was a Gen 3 motor. The 8.8 has small rectangular ports. It's not a rectangular port, I think. Uh, I haven't seen an 8.8 .8 that I can remember. The 8.1 has a semi-cathedral port. What causes pitting in the exhaust valve? It's a, it's a horrible, horrible like environment <laughs> for the valves. Um they do a lot of sitting with stuff on them and, and rust and stuff wears away and pits the valves. Plus they're really, really hot. They get stuff run through them. Steam flow test on 8.1s. It's not much better than 049 head, maybe about the same. Yeah, no, a, a stock 8.1 head is not like a good airflow research head. 8.8 .8 intake has mass motorsports logos on the factory one does. Eight point ones and eight point eights intakes appear to be similar. Okay. How 
Uh, Elo, I don't know about thoughts. I don't usually answer questions with that in it, but the I, I have a video up where Brian Tooley put LT heads on an LS block. The problem with that is it's not just a head swap. It's an everything swap. It's the it's a custom camshaft. It's a head. It's the rockers. It's a it's an LT exhaust. It's an LT intake manifold. It's it's everything, and I it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's it's different. But just take the LT motor and put the LT motor in. It'd be cheaper for you just to put port injection on an LT and then swap the LT in there. Putting head on with it on a big block with the same valve angle as the LS would help a lot. Um, yeah, most really, really high flow, high horsepower big blocks have altered valve angles. So that but the valve angle itself, you can still have a head that doesn't flow well that has a valve angle change. Um, so you have to have both. Seven in 78 around around with a 68 Chevelle L6 tarantula intake. That is old school. 850 double pumper. Cool. Amazing the boost the LS can handle. Then next week you pull in for gas and it drops a valve. I've never dropped any valves in an LS. Can you recommend someone I can do buy tools to do a three angle valve job in a pedestal drill? Mm, I don't know. Is is that possible? Or don't you need a um, surty machine to do that? An all aluminum engine block is a pretty important thing. It is nice to have an aluminum LS. One more minute. 53% uh, are saying yes, they would pick the 454. What causes the valve to drop? I've never dropped an LS valve, so I don't know what would cause that. We haven't had that problem. You cut the seats with new way cutters. I've seen people do those on a bridge port, um, but I don't know about uh, a drill press or, or hand drill. I do them with a cordless Makita, but... If they were designing a big block today, do you think they'd use a bigger cam than what they did on the Gen 6? I don't know. I do, it depends on what their design goal was. They're not, they're not trying to make more power. Because they can make the power that they needed to make. And then all the other things were important. So what's the good about the 454 versus the 5.3? Uh, what do you mean? Aluminum cast heads for big block on low compression and boost. I, I would pick aluminum heads for anything just because they're the other stuff is too heavy to lift. <laughs> Super G aerosol overhaul on old school stones. I have seen the stones used, but I don't know that I would I don't have a um I don't have a guide for that though. Yeah, John, it does the 8.1 does look a little bit like an LS. You received the Phytech Tri Power. When could you do a video? My problem with that is that they didn't send the intake manifold. I have the I have the dual quads and I have the Tri Power set up, but I don't have an intake manifold for either one of those. All I have are the carb units or the EFI units. <laughs> I like how Eric says I don't port iron heads. I don't blame him. Have you tested an L88, like an L88 427 with big boost? Nah, I don't think. I've never even run an L88. The guys at West Tech have run one, though. Balance and blueprint all with one can of Ford engine dark blue. That's right. Krylon rebuild. 5.3 versus 454 to make 1,000 horsepower. Either one of them will make a thousand horsepower with the same things with a cam springs. I would put head studs in either one of them. And then the same turbo rags. What's going on? One liter mafia. I have to pour iron heads because I can't afford aluminum. 
Yeah, Drew L88 would definitely be too too expensive to Big Bang, yeah. I would just like to run one. I think it would be cool. Do you know what the duration of a stock truck cam is? Yeah, it's 190, 191, or 191, 190. 327 shootout, Chevy versus Ford. When did Ford ever make a 327? And on that note, it is time to go, but <laughs> I will be back in the morning. 427. That would be different. That would be better because then you could do a camera motor or a FE motor or that kind of thing. But both of those would be really, really expensive. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow.